My name's Heidi Hamill. I'm Vice President for Science at Aura, which is an organization that runs giant telescopes for the U.S. government. The ice giants are interesting to us in planetary science for two reasons. One is that we just know so little about them. They are big planets, but they're very far away at the edge of the solar system. And so they're very hard to study, even with the best telescopes that we have. And we've only ever sent one mission, the Voyager 2 spacecraft, flying by each of them just for a few days each time. So we have very little information about them, so they're mysterious. We just don't know much. But why should we care? That's the other reason ice giants are important. We now know that there are thousands of planets around other stars. And what we have learned is that most of them seem to be of a class called a sub-Neptune. They're smaller than Neptune, but they're bigger than Earth. And we don't have any of those in our solar system. So to really get ground truth what, about this sub-Neptune class, we need to look at the endpoints, the Earth's and the Neptune's or the Uranus's, and they are just hard to study and we know so little. So that's why they're so important to study. So ice giants are a key component of my time with JWST. Um, I've got a team that's led by a young scientist in England named Lee Fletcher, who is in charge of planning and executing those observations. So far, we haven't gotten any of our science observations yet. We are still waiting. Uh, there has been one image of Neptune released by the Space Telescope Science Institute. That was a short program, four pictures of Neptune taken to just get a beautiful picture of Neptune. No science involved. In fact, we were told, don't science those images. Um, but nevertheless, we do science them because they showed amazing things. That one image that came from the Institute revealed the Neptune ring system in glorious detail. We had not seen the ring system with that detail since 1989 when the Voyager 2 spacecraft had flown over the planet. And we've tried. <laughs> we've tried with Hubble. We've tried with Keck, which is a very large ground-based telescope. And we've gotten hints of the brightest part of the ring system, but we hadn't seen the complete ring system in over 30 years. So it was absolutely spectacular to see that image. And I am just waiting with bated breath until we get our science observations of Neptune. They're not likely to come until spring of 2023, so it's a long time to wait, but I've been waiting 25 years, so I can wait a few more months. JWST is an incredibly sensitive telescope, and so we expect the pictures of Neptune and Uranus to be beautiful images, revealing cloud features, zonal banding. We expect to see the ring systems in great detail and maybe learn about the dynamics of the rings. We also plan to look at the moons of these ice systems. JWST's superpower though is not just its imaging, but its ability to do spectroscopy. This is to study the light from objects and spread that light out into its constituent colors. And by looking very carefully at that, those colors, we can learn about the composition of objects, specifically the composition of the atmosphere of Neptune and Uranus, the composition of the ices coating the ring particles, the compositions of the moons and their atmospheres, all of that will come to us from our JWST observations of the ice giant systems. Right now, the only way to study ice giants is with the biggest and best telescopes in the world. But we are starting to think very seriously about a mission, probably to the Uranus system, um, sometime in the coming decade or two. And all the work we're doing now with JWST, Hubble, and other ground-based observatories will be used to help us plan those missions in great detail.